Hello YouTube, welcome to Bowtie Media, my name is Dakota, and uh, today we're going to go through another episode of This Week in EDM, where we go over songs that came out, well, This Week in EDM, pretty self-explanatory, and we'll go over songs that, uh, yeah, my opinion on stuff, got 24 tracks this week that I wanted to talk about and cover, hopefully find something that you would like to listen to this week uh, and give you some new uh, recommendations, but uh, before we hop into that, the Spotify link is down below for all the songs in chronological order, as well as in the description and timestamps uh, for all the tracks, so... Uh, let's hop into it. Uh, no songs in trash this week. No trash this week, but we got a couple in bad, and let's get into those uh, songs I thought were not great. Uh, we've got Wish I Could Forget by Slander Black Bear and Bring Me the Horizon. Uh, huge collaboration here with really lacking results. I felt the track was very cheaply made. Uh, the vocals pack no punch, even though they sound like they should. Uh, the drops are lackluster for it being, um, yeah, just, it, yeah, it, it felt like it needed to be a lot more, and it just didn't, didn't. <laughs> it wasn't. It just wasn't at all. Uh, and the first drop was really short, and I didn't like that at all. So. Then we've got Tokyo Trip by Martin Jensen and Landis. Uh, very underwhelming main stage track with uh, dumb lyrical content, I thought. That was, that's pretty much that. Then we've got You Found Me by Adventure Club and Jessica Autofred, I want to say, uh, featuring Clara Park. Uh, this is a weird track for me in particular. It's kind of got a halftime dubstep track uh, beat to it that really lacked energy, similar to the Slander one. But uh, yeah, the second drop in particular sounded, I think, too rough for me. Uh, it's not something that I was really able to get behind and uh, did not love the kind of debut track from uh, Adventure Club on Monster Cat. So that's bad. And then we're moving into meh. Songs that I thought were uh, just meh. We've got Guy Arthur's NCS release in Keep or spend it all. Uh, wasn't too keen on the vocals here, but I did like the kind of pseudo trap production. I will say the finale of the track is definitely the best, but I think the vocals just kind of dropped it down a notch for me, sadly. So yeah, I just thought they were uh, too annoying for me. Then we've got uh, Vicentando, I want to say, with uh, Skrillex, uh, Ludman, Ludmilla, Dookie, and King Dodo. Uh, man, lots of people on this one. This is from the new Fast X soundtrack, the new Fast 10 movie. Um, this is like just a pop reggaeton beat uh, that's just made by way too many people, too many hands in the pot here, I would say. Uh, this track definitely embodies quantity over quality, especially in uh, producers here. But uh, yeah, it's it's just meh. It's not, not anything right home about. And then we got Feel Your Ghost by Tiesto and Mathame. Uh, fairly standard progressive house here that leans a little bit more into the big room sound with its bass line, but again, nothing too special here. Then we got Golden by Don Diablo, and this one actually uh, surprised me in how much I, I did enjoy it. I hadn't been a big Don Diablo fan in the past, uh, but this is a pretty standard progressive house track, similar to the other ones, but uh, more slightly anthemic, uh, but in the end it is, again, just a little too same-samey for me to really enjoy it, but... Then we've got Stars by Panau featuring BB Rexa and Ozuna. Uh, Panau was once uh, known for being very unique on their take on the kind of dance house music, but are starting to become way too mainstream in their style. Uh, this track really offers nothing new to the musical landscape, so that's that. Next, we've got About You by Roy Knox. Individually, I like the movements of the song with the varying kind of dubstep drops mixed in with the side trance, uh, but holistically, it just felt really messy. The transition from one movement to another just felt off and it felt like it didn't really work. Uh, the vocal sample doesn't give too much of the track and keeping it either grounded either. And so there's just, I didn't feel like there was any consistency in this uh, track particularly, but I did enjoy individually the sections, but... Uh, and then we're moving into the good category. Lots of good this week. 15 songs in good. It was a good week for me. Stuff that I thought was pretty solid. We've got Trompa by Sophie Tucker and uh, Soonery James and Ryan Marcinio. Uh, another main stage track here with a Caribbean sound design uh, in both its uh, production and percussions particularly. But uh, I feel like every tiki bar in the world is going to be playing this uh, for the next two, three summers. And uh, honestly, I'm here for it. It's pretty solid. Then we've got Daybreak by Lewis the Child and Zachary Knowles. Uh, poppy track here with jittery vocal chops, and it's kind of a quick, chill, summer, relaxing track. Uh, nothing much too special to it, but uh, I, did, I did enjoy it. Then we've got Torn Open by Killscript and Eddie featuring Grabbits. Um, this is yet another simple progressive house track with a great performance from Grabbits. I love his vocals uh, and the kind of added additive parts of the digital synths that are kind of more atoned to Eddie's sound design and what he's done in his discography. So hadn't heard anything from, from Killscript at this point, but uh, I like the three working together quite a bit. They've got Ultraviolet by Kill the Noise and Shadow Click. Uh, this is a rocking dubstep track that uh, plays around with a lot of different sounds, but it's mainly that electric guitar that really sells this track for me uh, and keeping its energy and pace. 
Then we've got Crashing by Godlands. Uh, I honestly believe Godlands is one of the premier trap producers right now. Uh, I left her last single, and uh, even though this one is good, I don't think it's nearly as great as the last single was. Um, but uh, yeah, it still stays relatively, I would say, one-dimensional, but astounding good uh, in that sense. It doesn't have the kind of quite highs and lows that Charmer did. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I think it's uh, still another solid trap track, so... We've got Let You Down by Tasaki and Pauline Her. Uh, Tasaki is taking a more relaxed approach to his new singles on Bitbird, and uh, it's honestly my favorite style of his. Um, he's not trying to do too much. It's just kind of a clean, unique sounding track that Tasaki's kind of, um, I would not want to say known for, but his sound design is definitely quite unique. And so I think when he's not trying to go too hard and too odd with it, uh, I, uh, I really enjoy it. So that's that. Then we've got Clinch by Kai Wachi and Prosecute, uh, an explosive dubstep track on this one, uh, a little bit on the shorter side, but really packs a punch with the time that it is given, and uh, I'm surprised how much I enjoyed this, because it kind of bleeds into a bit of, uh, bit of Britom at some point, so that's Clinch, though. So. Uh, then we got I Dread the Day He Takes You To... Paris by Jaiwol featuring Mern, a shimmering drum and bass single with bright melodies and a kind of quasi ethereal vocal from Mern in his performance. Uh, and one that I really enjoyed. I, I've liking, I've been liking the kind of two tracks now that Jaiwol has come out with in, in lieu of some project coming out. Uh, something's coming out soon, but uh, so I'm excited to cover that more in the future. Then we had Narcissist by Mr. Fiji Ouija. I will forever be a Fiji stan. I, I love the man. Um, the vocal chops here are great as it always is from him. It's got a kind of an oddly jumpy beat for a trip hop track, which is uh, nice in the grand scheme of uh, Fiji's discography for a little bit of a mix up and um, I quite enjoyed it. Then we've got Pressure by A Cloudy Sky. This is a gritty track with heavy distortion and a constantly driving beat. Uh, the production is very clean, all of that being said. And um, yeah, I would just say if you haven't heard A Cloudy Sky, go check them out. Uh, this track is a uh, good introduction uh, to their production, but uh, definitely not the norm for, I would say, A, cl a Cloudy Sky. So yeah, still good. Then we got Revelations by Zoo, DeVault, and Baby Jake. Another really clean track here with great pacing, I felt, and mixing in particular. Especially love the kind of glitchy outro in that back end, last little 30 seconds. Uh, the vocals felt quite cohesive, despite there being multiple vocal performers on here, and they both sounded pretty similar, but I had their own little takes, and uh, I really, really enjoyed this one. I think this is one of the better Zoo tracks as of late. Uh, then we got Feeble Games by Drulu. A, uh, <laughs> yeah, like, I just love Drulu's sound design. Their stuff is incredible. Um, they just have, like, their own carved niche that I think that they just absolutely, they just own. It's really hard to explain. It's like a weird, not quite trap, not quite future bass, a little bit heavier future bass, a little bit lighter than trap, but sometimes a little bit more chill, a little bit more electronica. Um, they're just this unique blend of, of sound and instrumentation, and uh, I love it. So this is this track in particular is simultaneously quite dark and uplifting, and um, yeah, big fan. Then we've got Outlaw by Imanu featuring Flodan. This is a grimy drum and bass track here that almost wavers into kind of a breakbeat genre with its kind of pace and tonality. But uh, production vocals are uh, stylistically crushed uh, to give this kind of feeling of angst and being trapped. And you feel like you're being crushed as the vocals and, um, yeah, and production is just kind of a little bit more, uh, a little bit more constrained uh, in a good way. So I liked it quite a bit. Our penultimate track of the week is Signal by Rez and Grabbits. Uh, great balance between their two sounds here. I love the kind of creepy undertones all throughout this track, which Rez is sort of known for. Uh, Grabbits does a little bit of back and forth. All does Grabbits kind of does anything at this point. But um, yeah, I, I felt like the lyrical content didn't really match what it was going for stylistically with its production. Uh, but I did think uh, it was quite interesting of a track and uh, I really enjoyed it. And our number one, or my number one song of the week that I thought that came out this week was actually Eat Your Heart Out by Oliver's featuring Danny King. Uh, I thought Oliver's absolutely killed the production on this, and I would say this is one of my favorite tracks from him in maybe a couple years. Um, there's tons of energy with differing movements. I thought the mixing was fantastic. I thought there was just quality all around. Um, Danny King's vocals were great too, top notch. I just, everything about the track, I just really enjoyed. I thought it flowed really smoothly all together too, and um I, I would really recommend listening to this song. So, uh, but yeah, that has been this week in EDM. Let me know what you think of any and all of the songs in the comment section below. But other than that, I'm Dakota from Bowtie Media, and I'll see you guys in another video.